Hi, yeah, yeah, welcome, welcome to Trekkie Girls. Um, please give a warm welcome to <laughs> all our millions of fans. Yeah. <laughs> hold them back, hold them yeah, back. Yeah. They're, so, they're so excited. Um, please, yes, we have to lock the doors. Well, <laughs> right, okay, we, we are here at the, um, the Starfleet Klingon Banquet at Northampton, and we're here, we're very, very honoured to have the wonderful oh, John Carrigan, the guest star of today's banquet, yes. and we've kidnapped him and locked him in this conference. Reluctantly. Yes, reluctantly. yes I know, which is strange, because I mean, you're like a martial arts expert, it's yeah. quite easy, really. <laughs> so, it's the law of the champagne, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, uh, that's just not real, it's just water, coloured. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, thank you very much for coming and talking to us, John. Yeah. Do you mind just saying a bit about who you are and about your involvement with Star Trek for us, please? Yes. Um, well, I'm an actor. I've been acting now for 25 years, and I've been um, practicing martial arts for 41 years, so that means I'm quite old. I won't tell you I'm very old. <laughs> not in Vulcan years. No, I'm just going to turn to powder before the end of this <laughs> interview. Um, I began going to Star Trek conventions in 1972, before you were born. Oh, we're about 10 years. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. terrible. <laughs> anyway, we cut the bit out. Um, and I used to watch all the Star Trek cast members, and I began to practice the martial arts in 72, and I became quite good at martial arts. And then at one Star Trek convention a few years later, there was a problem when we were in Coventry, and Coventry were playing a, another mm -hmm. football team, and they went on Rampage. Oh, and they started too. smashing up, you know, Windows and things. No, well, yeah. no, oh. no, in the streets. Oh, sorry, in the streets. Yeah. And they were showing. Truckies got on mad. Yes, yeah, truckies got on mad. Red hour. Pulled each other's eyes out. Like, anyway. um, okay. yeah, so there was a showing of Alien. Yeah, the uh, Alien film. Oh, yeah. And the cinema was just down the road from the hotel, mm -hmm. and we were lining up to go and see Alien, a special okay. show convention. And this football crowd surged along, and I just helped this disabled girl through the doors. As the crowds got there, it sounds very, 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 it was more panic than anything. And I held the doors shut as they were trying to, if they pulled them open, I couldn't have held them, they were trying to push yeah. them in. So I held them there for a few minutes yeah. and we pound on doors, and we were okay. And because of what I did, the convention committee thanked me and said, Would you like to go to breakfast with George to carry the guest? I was like, Wow. So I was introduced to George that far back, and then I went for a run with George. He's a runner. Yeah. And oh, you're a runner. I'm a runner. There you go. So, like, in, in the fitness, so I yeah. went for a run with George, and mm -hmm. he spoke about what I did, and that led to me looking after Jimmy Doohan when he came over. And I, you know, met all the other Star Trek cast members, and a couple of years later, after I unofficially looked after the Star Trek cast, Richard Arnold came over. Oh yes. He was Gene's assistant. Now, she just spoke to Richard, and he said, "Oh, you're the one we've heard about who looks after the cast members." And yeah. I said, "Yeah." And I struck up a friendship with Richard, and then when he went back to America, two weeks afterwards, I had a phone call. Richard came on the phone, hi, it's Richard from Paramount. Ooh. I've got someone who wants to talk to you. And on the phone, it was Gene's assistant, Sam yeah. Sackett, mm -hmm. and then Gene came on. Oh, <gasps> that be the dream. Said, oh, <laughs> said hello, thank me for what, you know. And then Richard came on the phone and said, Gene would like to invite you over to the sets to thank you for, wow. you know, helping. Wow. Would you like to come over? Uh, <laughs> uh, let me think, oh, yeah. 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 at that time What's I never flight? Yeah. <laughs> I never done anything, my life. never travelled anywhere but an aeroplane. Mm. So, went to Los Angeles, um, stayed with Richard. Richard talked to me, Gene. Gosh. And it was an amazing moment. And uh, you get life changing moments, literally life changing moments. Went to Gene's office, and there was this massive man, Gene Roddenberry. I thought, just shake hands, what'd you do? Mm -hmm. And he went, give me a hug. Oh. And it's a great picture Gee, on my website, johncarrigan.co.uk. Anyway, <laughs> if you, if well, Gene with his arm and his hand on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah. So, he sat in his office and said, what were your. You know, ambitions, what do you want to be? And you two probably would have said the same thing. I said, well, I'd like to send Captain Kirk to Jerry. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he laughed and said, well, I can help you do that. We would have yeah. said, we want to sit in Captain Kirk's lap, but there we go. <laughs> I would have said that, I would have got a different response, you know? yeah. Anyway, so Gene said, I can help you do that, but what are your life ambitions? Or very serious, all of a sudden. Mm. So I said, as I said today, well, I wish, I wish I'd have been an actor. And he said, are oh, you dead? She had these big blue eyes, are you dead? I said, no. He said, why aren't you an actor? So I said, well, I can't act. And then a life-changing moment, Gene said, if man had only dreamed of going on the moon, hadn't taken the steps to get there, would be earthbound. If you wish to fly tomorrow, flap your wings today. And I'll, if you believe in yourself, I'll believe in you. I went, and he went, let's go and sit in Captain Coach's chair. 